Yo, what is up everyone? Today, we will be doing What If Itadori was Satoru Gojo's son. Pretty much, this will actually be like the first Jujutsu Kaisen What If since the new movie had released in Japan two days ago. And I assume all the hype is going to start building up. As of now, it is December 26th and I will not be releasing this on the same day. Probably like tomorrow. Should start to gain traction. But pretty much today we'll be going over what if Itadori were to be Gojo's son. Now I'll have to make a few changes to this. Instead of the usual 100 years for the Gojo clan members to get the six eyes and limitless techniques or at least one of the other. And also for them to be lucky enough to get both. It would be every 25 years or 20 years. And this would make sense because obviously Gojo would get them. And then soon enough he would then have Yuji get them due to him. Uh, you know being his father and all but yeah that's how it would go and obviously i have to age you know gojo up by five years so whenever he had uh, done the thing he was 18 you know makes more sense more it makes more sense so yeah, when gojo will be 33 in the present timeline instead of 28 and that means hitori will still be 15 so you know but without further ado guys We'll be doing what if Itadori was Satoru's son, the movie. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, so pretty much we'll start this what if, as obviously we all know Gojo, uh, he had just defeated and finished the mission for the Star Plasm Vessel. Obviously they would have to kill the Star Plasm Vessel just in case for anyone, like for the vessel to get into any wrong hands, and obviously that would be a major problem. So unfortunately, uh, they would not kill her, but Toji would kill her. And then pretty much Gojo would fight Toji, but unfortunately Geto would then be killed. Obviously this would lead to his body being possessed, but that would be the later on. So Gojo would be Toji, obviously starting to unlock more of his techniques, being like using reverse curse technique in his brain to keep his mind always fresh due to his limitless and uh, six eyes drawbacks. And then he would start to learn more techniques like blue, red, and then purple. Uh, uh, he hasn't really used domain expansion in that fight yet. Obviously, he had just used like purple and all those techniques, and then he will probably learn it later on. So after that fight, he, you know, Gojo, being the more uh, carefree person, he would go to a party. Obviously, this party would not go too well, as uh, we we can guess what happened. Okay, I, I I'm not gonna really describe what happened, <laughs> but obviously after this, Gojo really wouldn't remember anything since, like. He Broski literally like got intoxicated and like how usually like a lot, you know. And it's Gojo, you know. <laughs> He's not gonna chill, you know. Broski just doesn't do the minimum. No, he does the absolute ab abs absent oh my god. He does the most, okay. Let's just say that. So pretty much afterwards, Gojo would just go about his life, but Itadori would be born as obviously he'd be taken care of by his mother and obviously his grandfather but his grandfather not really being there being in like a whole you know he's like old well, i mean technically he's not in the whole uh the um he's not in that nursing home yet but he'll still be there a few times but when itadori was about let's say eight years old him and his mother were pretty much on their on a walk as obviously we all know what's gonna happen or at least uh, if you don't know I'm, I'm gonna go over it so a cursed beer would actually appear this being more into the second grade obviously cursed spirits go from fourth grade fourth grade obviously down to special grade fourth grade being easily defeated by even a human with like no curse energy like just a shotgun as it was described third third would be a little more trouble second you would need curse energy and then first yeah on you would need special grade sor uh, sorcerers to do to kill them or exercise them so pretty much this this curse spear would be a second grade as he had felt yuji's 
uh, untapped curse energy, and he had thought if he were to eat, you know, Yuji, he would become stronger. This would lead to like the same similar circumstances how Masaki saved Ichigo, uh, kind of like the um, body shield type thing. Obviously, Itadori would unconsciously use some of his cursed energy as he would raise his finger up as a blue ball of energy would start to form as he would then send the cursed spirit flying back as most of its body parts had been uh, maimed at that point, killing the cursed spirit. All of a sudden, our boy Gojo Satoru was doing his patrol throughout the city when he had come upon this boy who had managed to use his technique blue and he was pretty confused about this but he had just you know left it up and not left it up <laughs> but he had pretty much just chalked it up to some mutation or a possible accident something that was just a some miracle so he would then see that his mother had died and he felt like he recognized her but not so much it was just something he had just felt then obviously Yuji would then be you know taken care of by his grandfather even though later on he'll be in a nursing home so Yuji would grow up to about 15 years old as he was then going to the high school his local high school obviously he would then join the occult uh, research not occult research club it's not, not, i was i was it was in the occult club it wasn't like the high school dxd occult research club they more focused on the spiritual side of things and they had suspected that the curses were even a thing obviously nobody really believed them and uh this would lead to him becoming friends with those usual friends who are older than him. Obviously, he would join the club when suddenly the class president would walk in and tell him, like, tell them that the room will now be taken over by another club. Now, Yuji would be like, what do you mean? We have three members. As obviously the coach of the track team would come and tell him that he had changed his form and pretty much have them on the track team. This would lead to like Yuji saying he didn't want to be there. And then they would have the agreement that if Yuji were to beat uh, the track team and just everything, like, you know, soccer, running, all the sports, then he could stay in the research club. After this, obviously, it was so similar to canon with Yuji even, like, <laughs> causing a dent in the goal. And it was, like, in the crossbar. Obviously, after this, the, uh, the other two members of the core club would tell him that if he didn't want to he could pretty much leave the club but yuji would insist that they you know they had grown on him and that he was gonna stay so after school yuji then heads over to the nursing home when he meets his uncle i'm now uncle his grandfather i really get mixed between those two but once he would see his grandfather, uh, his grandfather start to talk about what he usually did in canon, but wanting to be around people and die with other people and not be lonely. Obviously, instead of the usual things he said in canon, after that, he would start to tell Itadori that he had someone, he had met a sorcerer who was his father. Obviously, pretty much what would happen is during the incident when Yuji was like 8 years old, his grandfather had momentarily met Gojo, and this would lead to him recognizing him in a sense and just seeing the similarities. Obviously, he would just keep this in his mind and he would tell Root Yuji this before he would die. Obviously, he would tell Yuji that he needs to find him in order to get answers on what sorcery is and how to actually act as one. As Yuji would nod his head, he would leave, being met up by none other than Megumi Fushigiro. Megumi would question, you know, Itadori about the cursed object being Sukuna's finger, uh, and he needs to actually get it. You know, Itadori would then say, well, can you, you know, we can find it if you just explain to me what this is. Megumi would explain what curses are and that there was a king of curses being Sukuna. And this Sukuna had been defeated, or at least sealed, or, you know, it was kind of unknown. But now he has split his soul into 20 fingers. And this was one of them. As you know, Itadori would agree, so he would reach in his pocket and get out the box. Megami would open it and realize it was empty. As Itadori then realized that his senpais or his upperclassmen were going to release it or unseal it at night, at midnight specifically. 
So him and Itadori, I'm sorry, Itadori and Megami would head over to the school. Once they would get there, they would hear the roaring of a cursed spirit as Megami would tell Itadori to stay there. But obviously, Itadori would then, you know, not really follow those orders as he would still kick through the window, saving his cl you know, upperclassmen from the cursed spirit. Itadori would then get into a brief fight with, you know, the spirit until Megumi saves him, telling him that you need cursed spirits to actually, you need, you need cursed energy, forgive me, to actually defeat a cursed spirit. As Itadori would kind of learn something new here, and he would get the finger. Obviously, this will lead to Itadori still, t you know, eating the finger as Sukuna would come out. Now, let's say from now on, Sukuna will be able to use Itadori's techniques whenever he's taken over. But this time, it's not going to be his actual learn techniques. He's going to be able to use the master technique, the, almost like the better version of it, at least until Mitadori masters them. So once Sukuna would come out, he would easily defeat the cursed spirit. He doesn't even need to use any of Itadori's techniques at that point. Not He doesn't even know that he, Itadori has any to start with. Yeah, actually, he needs to like merge with Itadori formally to actually start to go through his memories. As suddenly, uh, Itadori take back control when uh, Sukuna was talking about like going through a massacre and shit. Like it, it was just crazy. As Itadori would then take over his body, saying, "You know, as Sukuna would be confused, how did you take over like back your body?" As Itadori would be confused as well. He's like, "What do you mean? This is my body. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be able to do that?" So obviously, Sukuna would be sent back to his world or the inner world, as. Megumi would then get into a, you know, a, a, get into a sign for Shikigami as his, you know, aura would start to form around him as he realizes he needs to exercise you know, Yuji Itadori because he had became a cursed spirit. As Itadori realized, you know, try to tell him that, you know, it's him, you know, as Megumi would start to look toward, look and like, at Itadori. He had finally looked at him as he had seen some resemblance to Gojo. This is weird. How did he have like the silver blonde hair and the blue eyes? And then thought it was just some cough up to some mutation as then he would get ready to exercise Yuji. And then suddenly he would hear someone say, yo, as he would look behind him as he would then see Gojo waving with a bag in his hand. As then, you know, Gojo would hand over the bag to you know, Megami saying not to drop this as this was the finest sweets in Kyoto, I believe the city was. As Gojo would walk up to Itadori, as he would then say, where's the cursed spirit, or the cursed object, as Megumi would then point towards Itadori, as Itadori says, uh, I ate it, as Gojo would say, really, as they would both say at the same time, really, obviously, they would just, like, confirm what Gojo was saying, <laughs> as Gojo would look at Itadori, he would then see the soul, seeing Sukuna's soul had merged with Itadori, as he then sees something else. He had seen the DNA inside of you know, Itadori, just seeing his basic output of his curse energy, and it had been similar to his own. As Gojo had told Itadori to do some barrier, I guess he would just tell, cough up the metaphor, and sort of resemble it to that of Limitless, as he had told Itadori to basically think in your mind that nothing can touch you as suddenly gojo would then throw a punch at itadori as itadori would then suddenly become scared but then he'd really like he'd close his eyes and prepare for the attack but once he would open his eyes gojo would then be there with his fist stopped by infinity or limitless as itadori would then be like how come you didn't hit me as Gojo's hands, it was struggling, it was moving. Obviously, Gojo can actually punch Ichidori since he has Limitless of his own. It feels, I feel like Limitless, if like two Limitless users were to fight each other, they would be able to hit each other, almost like nullifying each other's techniques. As Gojo would explain to Ichidori that he has cursed techniques similar to his own, because as Ichidori would finish his sentence, saying, because you're my father, as... Gojo would then say precisely as he would then tell Itadori to switch to Sukuna for 10 seconds obviously when Sukuna had switched with him Gojo had still pretty much <laughs> showed up Sukuna beating a one finger Sukuna as Sukuna would swear to him that you know he'll come back for more as Itadori would then take back his body 
after the meeting with you know this encounter he would then say goodbye to his friends as then they would head over to the hospital once they would get there pretty much they would see his you know um, Ichidor would see his grandfather's ashes as then he would look over to Gojo as he would then tell him it, or as Gojo would then tell him if he was ready to become a vessel obviously now a flashback Gojo had knocked out Itadori, and now they were, he was pretty much sealed in this room. As this time, what would happen is instead of the elders wanting to execute Itadori, they had realized that he was Gojo's son. And if they had imagined if he, they had another Gojo after Gojo were to become old, this would be really good. So instead of executing him, they would choose to welcome him, as maybe they'd even want him to master this Sukuna vessel of his and he'd become exponentially stronger protecting them and their social status from other cursed spirits as I'm not trying to have each door be executed so now we go to the present time Gojo would explain all this to Ichidori as Ichidori would then accept eating all the fingers as he would be handed the second finger he would start to eat the finger as suddenly the marks would start to resonate on his face as he would then start to struggle a little bit before he'd go back to his usual self as he would kind of, kind of smile as gojo would then start to laugh saying you are quite the interesting one i mean you are my son so that's probably why but after this gojo and itadori would head over to jujitsu tech or at least school once they would get there they would be walking through as gojo would start to explain to itadori who sukuna was as suddenly a mouth would start to appear on Sukuna's, uh, on Itadori's face, and this being Sukuna, as he would start to talk to Gojo, saying, you're not like any of the other cursed, you know, sorcerers. I don't know why I said curse, but sorcerers. As Gojo would then say, well, I am the strongest. As, you know, there'd be a few banter between Sukuna and Gojo, as Itadori would constantly try to cover his face, but he would just appear on his hand. So, after this, Sukuna would just go back to his realm, as Gojo would then be asked by Itadori, who would win between you, 20 finger Sukuna, and you? Obviously, you and then 20 finger Sukuna. Gojo would then think about this as he would say it would be quite the challenge, but he has no way to get past my limitless, even with his own Yorichi Tenkai. As Itadori nod after hearing Gojo basically say he'll mollywop Sukuna. As once they would get to the office, they, they would pretty much meet with the principal of the school. As he would start to do the interview with Itadori, he would then explain to Itadori uh, the part of the interview. And if you're wondering, does Itadori, does anything change about this interview? Not really. I, he hasn't really learned much about negative emotions and how to use curse energy. He just does it instinctually. So the whole interview would kind of go a little bit similarly. As after the interview, he would meet up with Gojo, as he would ask Gojo how does he use those limitless, te limitless techniques of his. As he would, you know, Gojo would explain to him that he uses negative emotions. Obviously, Bichidori has a lot of negative emotions, like witnessing his mother die, his grandfather, and shit. I mean, it's quite enough. As afterwards, you know, he'd start to train on his mind, or at least just shortly on realizing that you know he needs to use his negative emotions more and once they would pretty much get towards the rooms pretty much megami would then be you know uh, like next to itadori's room now once they would get there itadori look at megami's room as then he'd make a joke with um you know gojo saying Yo, what if megami had collected all the fingers and i'd just be sitting here as Gojo had and Gojo and Ichidori had imagined a sweaty and injured Megami walking in with another finger <laughs> as they would all laugh at this moment. Now pretty much after they had came over this moment, Megami still you know had that moment where he slams the door in Ichidori's neck uh, as a comical relief. As now the next day they would get up as Ichidori would have his new uniform with the red hoodie and all, this is now he was ready. But once they were walking off, Gojo would stop him. He would then say, have you been feeling it, right? The headache, you know, your eyes feel like there's too much information there. As Gojo would then tell Itadori this, as Itadori would nod his head. Pretty much what would occur next is Gojo would reach into his pocket as he would then pull a blindfold or sunglasses. As he would then say, which one? As Itadori would then picture himself with the, 
blindfold as he realized this didn't really this wasn't really you know ideal so he had just picked the sunglasses which had been literally blinked out he cannot see on the other side as now he is training as you know he was bumping into a few walls and almost got ran over by a few cars but then made it over to nobra once they would get there no bro was asking hey an employer if she can be a model obviously the employer was all scared because no bro's not no bro's the more like uh how do i say this uh, sort of like a tom i guess I, I, i'm not even gonna try but basically the employer is kind of weird okay let's just say that basically no bro would meet up with you know, megami gojo and itadori as pretty much they would then be told that they were going to Tokyo City as you know they would all get excited as you know that was pretty much like they were all imagining tall buildings with you know casinos and clubs as they were gonna have a nice time obviously they were very wrong they had went over to the <laughs> the farm life of the land the more of plains as they would all be disappointed obviously Megan Me doesn't really care but what would happen is Itadori and Nobro would be tasked with going in and pretty much exercising a curse. As Gojo would remind Itadori not to let Sukuna out, as Itadori nod his head, as he and Nobro would go in. Now Nobro would tell Itadori to split up, as this time he wouldn't really have much argument against this. He was curious to see what Nobro's tactics were. As he had said you know, goodbye to Nobro for now, he would start to walk through the building when he had came upon this spirit Itadori would then realize maybe he should use that technique that Gojo does or uses as then he would put a finger his right hand up as a finger you know the, his pointer finger up as a small red ball of energy would start to form as then he would send it towards the cursed spirit as the cursed spirit would just start to all of his limbs and organs would start to disrupt being literally red is pushing and blue is pulling it's sort of like the almighty pull and the almighty push by the way i'll be linking rogue x's video on limitless explain in three minutes and i'll also be doing the timeline video of yuji's life so you guys can get a better perspective on it so after yuji had defeated the curse he then sensed another curse he had then been on the other side of the wall when he had kicked through it as he had saved the boy from the cursed spirit as then you know he would then pretty much plunge through his arm as he would literally like pretty much um, cut his arm off or at least ripped it off at a point then the cursed spirit would try to escape as no one would tell him to throw his arm to him as he then throw the arm through the arm to him or at least not through it but it would di like just appear in his hand pretty much gojo had taught itadori how to move pretty fast obviously itadori not really having done this before it was you know, it wasn't perfect, but he had just got it by sheer luck. So, arm would appear in Nobro's hands as she would then get her, you know, doll technique. As she would then slam her hammer into it. As it would then start to affect the curse, being it's part of its body. It would then kill the curse. As, you know, Ishidori and Nobro would kind of do a high five, I guess. As they had pretty much uh, killed the curse. Norbro would then pretty much complain about how her makeup is ruined, not makeup, I don't even think she wears makeup, but how her beauty and all is ruined. As Itadori would just kind of think, you know, she, uh, it was kind of weird. She had like a psychotic side, but then cared about, never mind. But Itadori would just walk out as, in the background, Norbro was just complaining about how her, she got like dust on her clothes, like she's he's very picky about that I, I i don't know why okay don't don't question me I, i'm not gay gay katami but pretty much what would happen is gojo would offer them to take tim to dinner when isidori and nobro would argue about sushi or steak in which isidori would unfortunately have to concede as they would then go to sushi as they would get sushi as isidori would then suddenly pull on megami's arm as they would head over to get sushi once they would get over there, they would have dinner, as after this, that'll be the end of the day. So pretty much after, like, we'll do it the next day. Pretty much, um, Kiyotaka had picked them up, as now we'll be going over the cursed womb mark. And pretty much, yeah, let's just go over that. Pretty much, Itadori, Megami, and 
Nobara had been taken in, you know, Kiyotaka's limo, is once they would get to the scene, they would pretty much see a mother who has told Ichidori about his son, who is about her son, who was uh, lost down there and possibly still alive. Ichidori promised that he would bring her back up as they would then head inside. Once they would go inside, Megumi would inform his Shikigami, being the dog, to help them get through. As they would start to get through, when they would find the dead body of her son. Obviously, Itadori would start to argue with Megumi to bring it back, but suddenly Itadori would just make a hand sign and move the body to his mother, obviously wrapped up and shit, because that would be kind of disrespectful to just have the plain body of like bloodied corpse and all. As pretty much this would be more in respect, as that would end the argument. But suddenly they'd realize that Nobro was teleported away, as then the cursed spirit was in front of them. And <laughs> obviously, Chris Beer would throw a punch at Itadori, but its hand would stop. But it would just simply push through. It being more powerful than Itadori, it would punch Itadori as his technique was proved faulty. Uh, obviously, him not actually focusing. He doesn't know reverse curse technique to keep his limitless on active all the time. So, him being caught off guard, that was also a main factor of that. Itadori was sent flying through the floors as him, you know, he would tell Megami to run as he would then tell Megami to do a signal to when he could go all out and without actually worry of hurting Nobara and, and uh, Megami. Megami would help Nogra, Nobara and take her outside and pretty much he'd be waiting outside. He'd then do the signal as he'd realize now he can go all out. He would start to fight with the Cursed Spirit but the Cursed Spirit was definitely above him in strength and uh, brute, brute, I guess, instinct and brute instinct. And speed, of course. So, pretty much, he would have his hands still like cut off by the spirit, as he was pretty much on death's door. But suddenly, he'd realize what the principle said about negative emotions, as also Gojo saying, as he'd realize he needs to power all of his negative emotions into his body. Suddenly, what would happen is his hand would start to regenerate, as Sukuna and the realm would be like reverse curse technique. How does he have that? As suddenly, go, you know, Itadori's uh, finger would then suddenly just raise up as a purple ball of energy would start to form. As then he'd start to scream out saying that he'll save Megumi and Nobara and that he'll exercise this special grade. Suddenly the curse would be surprised as suddenly, you know, the purple energy would then envelop him as he would then erased, he was then erased from existence. After Itadori had eliminated the curse, uh, he had been so tired that Sukuna had taken the chance to basically take over, as Itadori could do nothing but watch. Sukuna had taken over his body, as obviously he had ran through, you know, ravaging, ravaging throughout the whole area, you know, killing all the cursed spirits before then walking out. Pretty much, Sukuna would walk up to Megami's direction, as he would then rip off Ichi Itadori's shirt, as then he would start to f uh, get into a fighting stance. Megumi would try his best to fight Sukuna, as Sukuna would then tell Megumi that he wasn't putting enough power into his attacks, but he sees a lot of potential in Megumi, as he had, he had seen Megumi using the terrain of his birds and his Shikigami to basically fight much better than Canon. Obviously, uh, receiving a few tips from Ishidori and how he felt, kind of Megumi would take these steps into account. And the fight would be a little more different, but Itadori would still, uh, you know, be dead because Sukuna like literally took out his heart. So after this, Megumi would then take Itadori's body back, as Nobara and Megumi would be kind of sad. But now Megumi will be sitting in or laying down in the uh, Emmy's office with uh, you know, Kiyotaka, Gojo, and Shoko before you know talking before they do the examination. Suddenly, we go to Itadori's mind. Itadori was there as he had seen Sukuna sitting in the throne, and pretty much Itadori had then said, So, you look just like me. I guess that's kind of the point since you didn't merge with my soul. As he then questioned Sukuna, Can you use my techniques? You know, the limitless and six eyes techniques. As Sukuna would then say, Somewhat, but I cannot use your domain expansion since obviously, uh, because I already have my own. As Sukuna would then make that offer to Itadori, as Itadori would direct reject it. As Sukuna would then say, well, if you beat me in a fight, 
and they'll simply revive you with no any no pretty much offers as Ichidori get ready to fight as he had activated his limitless and six eyes as he was ready to fight Sukuna he would start to run towards Sukuna getting into a hand-to-hand -hand combat which Sukuna would be more dominant in but Sukuna would have problem have a problem getting through his limitless as suddenly you know Ichidori would jump back remembering that thing that same negative emotion he had felt in the curse womb mark he would then raise his finger up as he would then charge up a blue as he would pull Sukuna towards him as he would go to pretty much choke slam him. Suddenly Sukuna would then raise his hand as he would then say release as he would then make a fire arrow sending it towards Itadori. Itadori would then you know laugh as the arrow would then hit his limitless as he'd release it but something else would happen. The arrow then had more had more punch the to the attack. So Sukuna had predicted that Suk um, that Itadori would release his barrier, and the arrow would just shoot him right through the heart, ending him. After this, Sukuna had won, but he had still found interest in Itadori's techniques. He had the power of Gojo. If he had became more powerful than Gojo, he would be even more of a potential how do I say this potential enemy than even Megami. As Megami and Ichidori were like Gojo and Toji, they were both like dynamic. The dynamic was kind of similar. Uh, I mean, not in a way since Toji couldn't use curse techniques, but their similarities in general. Ichidori being Gojo's son, while Megami being Toji's son. As obviously Gojo and Toji fighting it out with Gojo winning overall. So after the fight, Ichidori is now revived and pretty much you know gojo would then start to teach itadori he would then tell itadori about using curse techniques and pretty much infusing curse energy into his body and now itadori can now use techniques he'll be able to learn more and he would still watch the movies but he would have an easier time since he already feels negative emotions but it would take a few tries since the curse doll you know punch him here and now for like getting you know kind of um losing the focus so you'd watch all these negative movies, negative based movies like horror, like scary movies, sad movies, stuff like that, as he'd start to master his negative emotions. He'd then be met by Gojo as suddenly Gojo would then say, follow me, as Gojo would then teleport them back to the fight with Jogo, as <laughs> Gojo would start to show Itadori, he would tell Itadori, you can go on your own since you have your limitless, but always keep it on, as obviously Itadori has not mastered in reverse technique to keep it passively on so he, he had still told each door to stay nearby stay nearby as suddenly go no, sorry yeah it's hard to say gojo and then jogo so jogo would then use his domain expansion as the, they would be in a volcanic territory as suddenly gojo would start to explain to you know uh, itadori that in domain expansions your technique will always hit as itadori would remember this as then pretty much what would occur next is you know gojo would then show itadori his domain expansion as he would then explain to itadori that he has a similar domain expansion and he can use it to his own will as suddenly itadori would nod his head as now they would start to go over you know he gojo would then use his domain expansion and rip off uh what's his name? uh jogo's head after the fights would occur pretty much Hanami would come and use her technique or her I don't know if we could go over gender but she would use her technique to basically cause flower petals to distract Gojo and Itadori as then you know Hanami would save Jogo and escape after this would happen Gojo and Itadori would head back as now we'll do a time skip for about one month in this one month Nobra and Mon Megami had been training with their upperclassmen being like Maki uh, Inomaki and uh, uh, the panda I can't even remember his name <laughs> but pretty much they would do their own type of training they weren't they weren't gonna be stagnant at all as same with Itadori Itadori had been training and realizing how to use reverse curse technique and this is gonna come into play later on in the what if when it come to the arc of Junpei like saving Junpei and all and this is gonna be major as pretty much what would happen is after about a month Ichidori would then be introduced to Nanami as him and Nanami would go on a mission to basically th investigate a theater which had had the uh, cursed spirit spotted 
as once they would get there, Nanami would start to explain to Itadori how to see footprints and, uh, how do I say this, track, like start to track her spirits and they would track it down. As they would be outside, two of the spirits would start to come uh, towards their direction as Nanami would explain to you know, Itadori his technique. As, you know, being the 70-30 ratio, or I think it's 30-70, it's the, his ratio technique. I swear if anyone, <laughs> no, 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 I'm done, bro. If I, ever, if I ever see anyone say ratio on this video, I swear I'm going to start punching the air. No, I'm just kidding. But basically, you know, Nanami and Itadori, they would defeat the cursed spirits as Itadori would then kind of uh, go on his own way, investigating the city, and he would meet up with Nanami a little bit later as he'd be walking around when he'd find a riverbank. He would then sit by the stairs as he would look at it when he had been approached by someone. This being Junpei. Junpei would start to question Itadori on, you know, how the scene was, and they would start to con converse. And Itadori would start to question Junpei if he found anything unusual with the theater, and Junpei would lie, saying that he didn't. They would start to converse a little bit more, realizing they had more in common than usual, as then suddenly Junpei's mom had called, you know, Junpei in for dinner, and also invited Itadori. Pretty much after he had invited Itadori, they had went and had dinner, and they had a pretty good time. And afterwards, pretty much Itadori would leave, as about a few hours later, he would sense curse energy coming from his that direction. As so once he would get there, he had seen, obviously, Junpei's mom, like, her bottom half of her body just straight up gone. As, like, Itadori, he had to remember Gojo's reverse curse technique. It only worked on himself. He had never tried it on anyone else. As he had realized if maybe he could try it this time, maybe it could work. I mean, he had nothing to lose. I mean, obviously he had he had a lot to lose since he had he's seen like Junpei's mom die, but like he sees that a lot. So I had walked up to her corpse as he then tapped the top part of it, like the shoulder area, as suddenly he would infuse curse energy, as suddenly the bottom half of her body would start to regurgitate, as it would then reform. And suddenly it would be as if nothing happened all the blood had went back into her body and her body had pretty much reformed after this Junpei would kind of be happy at the same time yet suspicious how Itadori could use such a technique obviously Itadori was scratched the back of his head saying that he had this was the first time using it on someone else so it was a good thing that it actually worked so after Itadori had saved uh, his, Junpei's mom he had left and this would lead to Itadori and Nanami confronting uh, Mahito. Obviously, Nanami not being there. Uh, obviously, it was more of like a uh, plot point. So Itadori will then kind of realize how bad cursed spirits are and how he shouldn't receive help from like Sukuna. Oh, that's how the canonical meaning is. So Itadori will then face off against Junpei. Oh, we'll keep going over that first. Junpei's poison Shikigami won't really work on Itadori as he then be pierced by him. As he, Itadori and then Junpei would start to talk as they'd realize that Junpei had a lot of potential at Jujutsu Kaisen Tech. Jujutsu Tech, forgive me. And suddenly Mahido would come. As he would then appear and he would turn, like, transform Junpei into a curse while holding down Itadori. As he hadn't had his limitless on at the time as he was having like a deep conversation with Junpei as suddenly what would occur next is Mahido would transform him suddenly Itadori wouldn't ask for Sukuna's help he would then reach over break easily activating his limitless as the technique wouldn't work anymore like the like Mahido holding him down as Itadori then walk over to Mahi, um, sorry Mahido, uh, Junpei. Once he would walk over to Junpei, he would then tap his shoulder as he would try to use his reverse curse technique on him. As slowly but surely his body had went from the usual uh, transformed human like to that of Junpei. At this, Junpei would thank you know Itadori for saving him. As what would occur is Junpei would start using his Shikigami against Mahido. As Itadori and him would start double teaming, with Itadori gaining an aura, saying like, I want to kill you. As Itadori and uh, Junpei would start jumping <laughs> Mahido, Junpei not really having much effect, but Itadori doing lots of damage to him via punches and kicks. And re pretty much Mahido realized that his attacks are hitting him, his soul itself. 
as they would be, you know, Mahiro be pushed outside. And suddenly, Mahiro would blitz, you know, Itadori as you know he was about to take him down, and you know this was when Nanami would enter. Nanami would then save Itadori as they would then go through their fight with Mahiro using domain expansion. Suddenly, Itadori would then realize something Gojo had told him over the month. He had remembered Gojo's domain expanding your cursed spirit, cursed energy, as suddenly he would break through as he would kick through the domain expansion, appearing in front of, between, in, in peering between Mahiro and Nanami. As Nanami was accepting that he was going to die, thinking about the books he could he could have read, and obviously he doesn't do that until Shibuya, but I kind of want to have just a small thought there. Itadori would then appear in front of, in between of them, as Itadori would then say, this is going to be not good, not a really perfect domain expansion, but it is, you know, this is going to have to work for now. Zen, he would then go into the symbol of domain expansion with the middle finger up and the pointer finger wrapping around it. As then, he would then say, Yorichi Tenkai, Limitless Void. As suddenly there'd be an explosion of light as Mahiro was then encompassed in the domain expansion. There'd be nothing but information going to his brain as it would then put him into a state of shock. As after this, pretty much Itadori would then appear behind Mahiro as he would then grab him by the head and then rip off his head. Now, pretty much what would happen is after Itadori had taken down Mahiro, uh, and Mahiro would regurgitate himself and escape. Pretty much that would end that would mark the end of the arc as now this will be the end of this what if obviously I, I, at first i wanted to do a movie special but there's just too much events to go over and i wanted to this is i wanted to study the events more carefully to see what i can do that's better obviously i still have time since the movie just came out just a few days like two days ago in japan so it might not come out to the other countries until later on so i still have a bit of time but without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoyed this what if of what if Itadori was Satoru's son. If you want, you can comment any suggestions what I can do from the plot line from here. Any potential techniques you can learn, like OC techniques. Yeah, pretty much, I'm open for anything. But without further ado, guys, have a good day. Yeah.